The Xiaomi 12S Ultra has the world's largest smartphone camera in more ways than one. Not only does this phone have the current largest physical sensor inside, but also, as you can see by the included clear rubber case, this 12S Ultra has the world's largest camera bump on the outside, a singular monocle traversing nearly the entire width of the phone. It is memorable to be sure, but is Xiaomi's latest design durable? That's what we're here to find out. This video is sponsored by Audible. Let's get started. On the front side, this 12S Ultra looks just like any other smartphone made within the last five years. It's only when we get to the back side that things start looking very different. Instead of every camera having its own circular lens, we have one giant umbrella of glass covering all three cameras at once. And it really is mostly glass back here, with no raised metal lips for scratch or drop protection, which is a brave move. Let's start with the front. As always, we have our most scale of hardness, which visually tells us what the screen is made from. Plastic scratches that are two or three. Normally we see phones rock side to side during this test, but with the camera bump the size of the phone, this Xiaomi 12S Ultra rocks top to bottom, and of course comes with an included plastic screen protector. If the screen is made from glass, it'll scratch at a five or six, and if it's made from sapphire, it'll scratch from an eight or nine. A diamond phone, which we have yet to find, would be a level 10 on most scale of hardness. As we see, we do get scratches at a level six with deeper grooves at a level seven which means the Xiaomi is using tempered glass in their flagship. That same scratch resistant glass is protecting the 32 megapixel hole punch selfie camera. The earpiece slit is super thin up here at the top of the phone. Not enough room for a speaker grill. The sides of the phone are made from metal, including the rather small power button and thin volume rocker. The buttons here are not removable like we have seen on Samsung's phones. The top of the phone is actually plastic, with no glint of metal underneath the Harman Garden branding. Just a microphone, light sensor, and one of the stereo loudspeakers. The left side of the phone is rather uneventful, just more metal. Down at the bottom we have our second loudspeaker, 67 watt fast charging USB-C port, and our dual SIM card tray with an orange rubber waterproofing ring to help with the IP68 water resistance. So far all pretty standard for a smartphone. Making our way to the back panel, Xiaomi has their logo reflectively and securely inlaid into the self-proclaimed environmentally friendly silicone leather back panel. There is a 50 watt wireless charger in here somewhere. And while I mean Xiaomi is technically correct that silicone is slightly environmentally better than plastic, let's not kid ourselves about any of this actually being good for the environment. Planned obsolescent e-waste does not suddenly become clean just because a cow didn't die. Where was I? Oh yeah, the camera lens. Tucked up inside the beach ball sized camera bump are three separate cameras, all protected by one giant thick slab of glass, like a big contact lens, or you know, Mike Wazowski's face. Speaking of aliens and lenses though, I learned recently that when the Hubble telescope was launched into space way back in 1990, it was actually near instantly unusable because of the large almost 8 foot mirror that collected light had been accidentally ground down to the wrong shape and was producing very blurry images. It was an error of astronomical proportions. I learned about this mistake while listening to the audiobook Handprints on Hubble from my channel sponsor Audible. Written by Katherine Sullivan, the first woman to walk in space, the audiobook details how NASA was able to fix the telescope with astronauts while it was still in orbit, since Hubble was designed to be modular, repairable, and upgradable from the get-go, which is pretty cool. That modularity is one of the reasons why Hubble is still functioning today, taking awesome images 30 years after its launch. If you want to listen to handprints on Hubble, new members can try Audible for free for 30 days, with the link down in the description, audible.com slash jerryrig. Audible comes with a huge selection of audiobooks, of course, but also Audible originals and podcasts across every genre, even guided fitness programs. 
and of course you'll get to choose a new title to add to your library every month. Personally, I kind of like the more technical documentary style audiobooks, but man, they do have everything. If you want to learn how Hubble was saved from being a $2 billion orbiting pile of junk, that handprints on Hubble link is down in the description. Audible.com slash jerryrig, or text the word jerryrig to 500-500, and you can start listening from anywhere, anytime. Now, luckily, the lens atop Xiaomi's 12S Ultra doesn't need to be optically precise, since it's here mostly for protection, and not necessarily for any photographic precision. The bottom camera is the 45 megapixel telephoto, the center camera is the 48 megapixel wide angle lens, and the main camera, the one with the one inch massive sensor, surprisingly is the one off to the side, and not the one front and center. We'll dig more into that from the inside during the teardown. Since the singular lens is made from glass though, I'm already looking forward to all the cracked camera backs we're about to see. Make sure to tag me on Twitter if yours ends up breaking, so we can all supportively, of course, join in your misery. There is, of course, an optical underscreen fingerprint scanner, pretty standard on smartphones these days, but it also doesn't seem to be working all that great registering my fingerprint. Now, my fingerprints probably aren't the best candidates, though. After working on all kinds of projects, the surfaces of my fingers aren't photogenic enough to function properly with a lot of these scanners. Either way, I don't use them very often, and I'm also not too worried about it. Xiaomi has pulled out all the stops with their display, though, with 1440 pics, 1500 nits, 10 bits, and 120 hertz. It's what we would expect in a flagship. And of course, all 6.7 inches lasted about 30 seconds under the heat from my lighter before going white and not recovering, which means it's AMOLED. Now for the bin test. A camera lens that spans the whole back panel might just be a weak point. Xiaomi hasn't always survived my tests. Intentionally dividing a phone in half might just provide the hypothetical dotted line it needs to snap along. And while there was a significant bop, there doesn't appear to be any catastrophic damage, like we saw in the OnePlus 10. This Xiaomi 12S Ultra does sure flex quite a bit, but the camera lens itself remains intact and the phone is still functional. Turns out that pop we encountered was a subluxation of the upper perimeter with propinquity to the antenna line. A weak spot we have seen on other smartphones, but without catastrophic results in this particular case. Even with this newly minted minor physical flaw, the phone does live on and still functions, which means the Xiaomi 12S Ultra passes my durability test. Nice work, Xiaomi. Thumbs up for that. The design of this 12S Ultra is definitely outside the box, memorable, and now we know, mostly durable. Let me know a phone you want to see tested next down in the comments. Coming out with me on Instagram and Twitter, grab your free audiobook with a link in the description, and thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.